going to be, be brief. But in as much as we are going to be brief, we are going to understand the revelations of God. The, some time, some weeks ago, I spoke about a particular teaching which I titled Part 1. Who remember that? Part 1. What did I teach on? Huh? What was... I know the, the, the other last ones are not... Say that, let me hear. Keeping the ordinances. The other ones were not pure teaching. The other ones was prophetic preaching. Evangelical shouting. <laughs> You know, sometimes when you want to prophesy, your, her, her, your, your head will be burning with fire of the Holy Ghost. But this morning, we are going to teach. And in any of our teaching, we are, you, are, we are, you are expected to ask questions. We don't teach. And after teaching, we ask you to believe it like that and do what? And go home. A man called me from London. I've forgotten his name. I don't know if it is. I think brought Tony or something. Yeah. Yeah. He called me from London and he said to me, he said, I've been following you for a long time. I'm not calling you because of the fulfillment of the prophecies of God through you. Because I know when so many people call you, they will tell you, you're a genuine man of God. You're this. He said, that's not what I'm calling you. He said, I am calling you because of your teaching. He said, here in London, they don't teach us that. Anybody will just come and preach what he wants. He believes that anybody who has listened to that person, uh, you know, have accepted it and go home. He said, but some of the revelations, you know, the time we taught on baptism, the wrong of pattern of baptism, then we spoke about... Uh, Pregnancies on dressing. But this morning we are going to speak. But I'm going to look into, we're going to look into this controversial part of the story of office of a man and a woman. So I'm teaching in keeping the ordinances part two. But what I'm talking about this morning is about authority. Somebody say authority. Somebody say authority. Because so many things are going on in churches today because, you know, the Bible even made it so clear that at the end time, even the elect will be deceived by those that went to school very much well with, with big name, you know, PhD ambassador, you know, that kind of... Even in the Christian them now, pastors are answering the same thing. You will see one pastor. He will answer, Archbishop, ambassador, Doctor, apostle, senior prophet, one person. So this morning, we're going to look into some certain things of authority between man and woman. Even today, you will see that in the offices called by God, that today women are now answering Ark, Ark Bishop. When I never see that one, women are answering Ark what? So let's look into all this because it's bringing controversy across Christendom and what we are going to teach is basically one principle which is the revelation in the scripture. Then I want you to prepare your question and ask and so that we can be able to explain through revelation. We are not here to remove or to add but we are going to tell you the truth. Okay, first of all, let's go to First Timothy chapter 2 from 1 to 14 but I'm going to take my reference from 11 and 12. But check me First Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1 to 14. First Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men. The apostle says when it comes to prayer, intercessions, offerings, coming to church, Everybody can shout Holy Ghost fire. Everybody can be prayed upon. It has no authority to be exercised in that. 
when it comes to prayer, as we are here today, and I am raising a prayer point, or any other ministry is raising a prayer point, everybody have this access to altar because God has died, Jesus died for us, being God and resurrected again, giving us the privilege when the garment was broken. So, anybody can pray and God can hear. Do you understand? So, everybody has equal right to do what? To pray, to give thanks, to dance, and to what? Celebrate. For kings and for all that are in authority, everybody, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life uh -huh. in all godliness and honesty. Yes, proceed. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God it our is Savior. Acceptable in the sight of God. Our who will have all men to be saved uh -huh. and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Yes, sir. For there is one God. There is only one God. And one mediator between God and man. You know, I think we have taught on this particular one now, on Revelation, where people absorb that there is three God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We've been able to explain that we only have one what? God. One God. And he has only one name. name. I think we've done that. So you can get that message on Action God TV. Go ahead. The man, G, the man Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who gave himself a ransom for all, uh -huh. to be testified in due time. Yes. yes. Whereunto I am ordained a preacher uh -huh. and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie it not. Uh -huh. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith mm -hmm. and vanity. Yes. yes. I will okay. therefore that men pray and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. and doubting. In like manner also, the, the, that women adorn themselves in modesty apparel mm -hmm. with shame shamefacedness and sobriety, and sobriety mm -hmm. not with broaded hair, broaded hair or gold or, gold, or, pears, or pears or costly array. I think we have thought about this particular revelation he read here. Is that correct? Or you have watched that message. I think I've taught on that. Correct? But that's not what I'm teaching today. I think I've done that. For the workers. Okay. So I'm going to teach on that. I'm going to explain so that you understand where, you know, in church doctrine, there are some churches you will go. There are women will not wear earrings. Is that correct? But there are some churches you will go, it will be so clear that you can come as you are. So, so different, different church, church and different, different what? What? what doctrine, but, but that's not our topic today. Topic so let's so let's, let's proceed. proceed. But which becometh women professing godliness uh -huh. with good works? Uh -huh. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. Now this is my reference on today's authority teaching. Um, uh, talking about about authority. Verse eleven. Let the woman learn in what? In silence with all subjection. Go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach. I suffer not. This is where controversy has gone into the church. I suffer not a woman. Not to do what? To teach. Uh -huh. Nor to usurp authority over the man. Now I want you to underline that particular word. Usurp authority under what? Over a man. Over a man. Uh -huh. But to be in silence. But to be what? Silence. In silence. Uh -huh. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Then Eve followed. And Adam was not deceived. Uh -huh. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Hold it there. Now, remember we are talking about authority here. And the apostle went so far to make it a very more clearer topic for us to understand. And he said, hear this, Adam was first formed though before Eve. He's trying to make you understand. First of all, he should be a man though before what? A woman. Now, look at where the uh, controversy is coming. That they said a woman should lie silent. Over what? Over what? Rolling authority over a man. Now, when the Bible was referring to silence, it does not necessarily mean that you should no longer talk. But it means that as a woman, you have an edge where you will do things and you will stop. And you will not reign 
in, in, let me use the word, being in charge over a man. I remember that when God wants to analyze, when Jesus wanted to analyze the kingdom of heaven, he always used marriage as what? As his example. When he wants to talk about the kingdom of God, he always used the institution of marriage to make the analysis. When he wanted to talk about the church, he will always use the marriage to make his analysis. Now the question is, this authority and they ask a man, a woman not to teach. That is where the problem is. Because in so many churches today, women are teaching. Is that not correct? Even in our own church, women are teaching or in one way or the other. Is that not correct? But there is a revelation in that scripture. And what is that revelation? That a woman should lie silent. Then remember, a man was formed first before. It was a clear revelation that it has been told that a woman cannot exercise supremacy in terms of leadership over a man where there is an ordained man in that particular place. Let me make a case here. You know, today in some churches, women are ordained pastors, apostles, uh, bishops. Is that correct? Yeah, are there women bishops? Yes, yes, bishops. bishops. Right. And now, when you go to that church, those kind of people are more or less the wife of the overseer. More or less of them. More, more, of, more of them, I think so. Is that correct? Many of them are the wife of the organ. You know, will be ordained a bishop and all that. Before I make my case, I want to let you know that it's very wrong and non-biblical from Genesis to Revelation that I will go and ordain my wife an apostle or a bishop where I have a male pastor in the church. When church wants to close, the male pastor will then need that my wife will lay hands upon it. It is not biblical, brother. Is an error. Have you ever wondered to yourself at the Old Testament time when everybody claimed it was the time of law in existence? That there was no woman priest. Every priest was what? A man. Is that correct? Now, Jesus came who revealed us that he is the headquarters, supreme headquarters of God whereby in him everything dwelleth. In him you can come to heaven. In him you can do everything. In him you can cast on demons. Philippians even said the mention of his name. Every knee both in heaven, on earth, and under. If every knee in heaven will bow, that means there is an owner of that name. But that's not what we're saying today. When Jesus came, he wanted to show us the way. The Bible made it so clear in John that Jesus is the way the truth and the what? Is that correct? So, was he the one that showed us the way of the Christianity we're playing today? Eh? Eh? Okay, let me use another language. Was he the one that brought the New Testament we're praying today? Like, he brought the revelation to us to understand the word of Christ, the word of God. Correct. Yes. Now, when he came, he decided to show us the way and raise men. When he was raising the men, we were shocked that there is a mystery that was not revealed. And what was that mystery? Jesus decided to choose the 12 apostles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and what? How many women were there? Now I want to ask a question. Was Jesus closer, close to women at that time? Do you know that he was even closer to Mary and who? Martha, than so many of the disciples. 
In fact, in the level of favoritism in the church now, if it is now in the church, and your dad too close, dedicated to the church, carrying everything, following Jesus everywhere, I will not just anoint your apostle, we will ordain you a senior, a senior apostle. Then, there is a mystery. Jesus chose these 12 apostles, there was no woman. I remember he was showing us the way. Because every other person that is preaching something outside of what Jesus has led with his disciples is preaching in error. No wonder the Bible said even the elect will be what? The sin. Then suddenly, a man called Judas betrayed Jesus and hung himself and died. Was he replaced? Yes. With a man or woman? With a man. What's his name? Huh? Amen. Even when Jesus resurrected, who received the message that he was he has resurrected? He said, Go, go and tell them. Huh? A woman. Go and tell them to meet me in Soso Mountain. So he showed himself first to what? Still, that does not because of all the closeness he was with them, but he did not still reveal the mystery why he has never allowed the woman to uh, uh, operate in a higher authority than a man. Paul said, a woman was the same, but not a man. And today, people are copying what the Western world is doing. By the grace of God, by privilege by heaven, I've been privileged to travel to so many countries of the world. I've been privileged to travel to Western countries. And I can tell you that the Constitution gave a woman a better right than a man. For some of you here that have traveled, then the constitution equally gave children a better right than what? But let me tell you what is plain. And that's why if you're a pastor in a western world, you want to start a church. <laughs> Number one, it will be an agreement between you and your wife. <laughs> Number two, in the trustees of that, don't be shocked that the chairman of the trustee of that church will be your, your what? Your wife. Then when you resume church, you have no option than to ordain your wife a senior pastor. And people got to forget that something is playing that the day you were called, your wife were not there. And you will be shocked to understand that your wife do not even have such kind of gift that will make him resume such office. As so, you know, the Bible made it so clear if you desire something, it will come correct. So, some people will say, Then, how come the Bible said when you desire? So, you have desired now, it has come. So, you cannot be a pastor. My brother, you cannot desire a pastor, it will come. A pastor is not a gift, it is a calling that is different from the gift of the Spirit and a calling onto the office of the fool. In office of the calling of the fold is only five. But the gift of the spirit is everywhere. Healing. Prophecy. Uh, what again? Even dream. Uh, say now, say, say. Huh? <laughs> more, more. There, there, there are many. You know the problem? I speak in tongue. You know, the speaking in tongue only is so, is so worrisome. The other day I spoke about it here. There's some church you will go. They will teach you how to speak in tongues. Whereby apostles, in so many scriptures, it is granted that when the spirit came upon them, now the spirit led them on what to say. So automatically, speaking in tongues is by the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. That's why when you go to one of my sons, who is a, uh, an evangelist now, some of you know him, Evangelist Chima. 
He went with his friend to one church. When they got there, the, the pastor said, we are not going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Everybody open your mouth. Whatever that comes in in that mouth, began to say it. Began to say it. So he said, that his friend doesn't even go. He's this kind of boy that lives uh, any kind of life and all that. He said the guy doesn't know what to say. The guy now started shouting Asaba. Uruba, Saba, Uruba, Saba, Uruba. So he said he listened to him. What kind of tongue Uruba? When they come out, they ask him, oh boy, tell me the truth. What, what were you saying there? He said, what do you want me to say? Pastor said everything that entire your mouth. said. He said he was shouting Uruba, Saba, Uruba, Saba. I went to a church. I won't mention his name. We were so many and we are holding hands. The pastor now said that we need to pray. And I was ready to pray. The next thing I heard is, he said, everybody began to blast in tongue. My brother, I didn't know what to say. What I did was I was just shaking my head and I was doing my mouth like this. I was not saying anything. I don't know what I would have been saying. Because for you to speak in tongue, you will receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and it will lead you. It's just like me now. You see me now. You say, Professor. Somebody was chatting on our prayer line, so I responded. He said, is, is he the prophet? I now said, yes. He, he sent again, Professor. And I said to the person, he's a lady. And I said to the person, no, he said to me, I'm in pain. He now said, Professor. I said to the person, as the Lord leads me, I will. So, I now went to other messages because there were so many, over 200 messages. I don't even know where to start. It comes like that almost every day. So, I now saw that she was saying, I went back to read what she was. She now said, I should prophesy. But I've responded now. Because if the Lord began to speak, I will tell her. She now said, if it is my prophet, by now you would have scattered me with prophecy. So, one mind said, tell her that if actually your prophet is that scattering you by now you wouldn't have been complaining that you are in pain one man said leave her oh. I just left her I didn't respond now because some people forgot that what we somebody called me the other day he said that we are suffering the government of President Bugari is suffering us so when the person was making that call he said and you are the prophet that prophesied that he is our next president what will you say about it? My question is, so because the Lord showed me what will be, then you say I shouldn't talk again. Ignorance in the house of God is becoming alarming. Everybody wants miracle. Nobody now wants to get a sense of belonging and the direction of a true revelation of who God is. Now when you follow that scripture, then you understand that a woman will lie in silence under a man. See, in a church you go to and a woman is in charge. There is an error in that order. It's an error. In the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, there was no place a woman was called into the fold of the office. What women operated was the gift of the spirit. A woman can prophesy. A woman can come and tell you about Jesus, the gift of evangelism. A woman can tell you you are healed. You receive healing. That is the gift of healing. A woman can tell you, I saw you conceiving. Then you conceive. There is the gift of the prophecy and the office of a prophet. Now because you have the gift of the spirit, does not make you a priest in charge of the altar. If you don't know, let me shock you. All of you here have one gift or the other. Then if now, maybe because you pray for this person, you get ceiling, automatically you are now a pastor. Ah, my pastor, they try, he prayed for me. For we and that kind of church cannot teach you the truth of the revelation. Because they can only teach you from what they learned from theology school. And theology school will only teach you from the doctrine of the founder. What he believes. Since when I started and accepted to carry the Bible, I have never gone to Bible school till now. I was speaking in Seattle, Washington. 
all the people that came there was professors, professors. Then I now decided to raise the issue of calling a woman into the office of the phone. Because I know it will be a problem. Because you don't say that in America. Who are you now? So as I said it, all of them kept quiet. When I finished talking about it, everybody started clapping. And they said, this is not just what you learned. There is something that has reviewed this to you. Today, nobody can now separate that there is only five-fold ministry. Which has to do with the office of the apostles, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and what? A teacher who is known as a rabbi. Then every other thing is gift, healing. I wonder my, 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 my prophet prophesied. My this, she told me I was, that is gift of the prophecy. And all those gifts are being accommodated in the church, which should be used for the what? For the what? Edification of what? The church, the kingdom. Because of what goes on in the western world, because in that western world, you must have to position your wife now. My wife operates the gift of prophecy. But that does not make her a pastor, a senior pastor. When you give her mic, she releases it to you and go and sit down. You don't finish. In our branches, we have pastors. They are men. Women are fixed in any way. Let me even ask you a question. Stand up, mama. I ordain you now a pastor. Then, and I'll say to you, tomorrow, you'll go to our, the, our branch in Abba, and I'll say, you're going to go to Abba. And you're going to preach for three days. Then as you reach home, your husband said to you, just got an invitation to have a, a meeting with my company and Mr. President. I'm going to be there for three days to take care of the kids. Then you now said, ah, but uh, my pastor said I'm going to speak somewhere in Abba for three days or for one week. He said, ah, tell your pastor this time will not work. He has to fix somebody else. Which one will you obey? Your pastor or your husband? You will obey your husband. That's correct. Who will obey the, his pastor here? Eh? Many of them here. Brother said you're angry this morning. Say many of them. <laughs> Say many of them will obey their pastor. It is wrong to obey your pastor first, brother. Obey your Husband first, 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 and now, if your husband has such powers to change the will of your pastor, some people will say, "But if it's the will of God, even God knows that men, He has given men power." He said, "Women lie in so much subjection unto your husband." That means your husband will control you. So. God, too, was not foolish to understand that the husband will control them. And that was why in the foundation he laid, because the Bible was inspired by the Spirit of God, from Genesis to Revelation, he has never allowed a woman to be in any big office, in charge, in control. Miriam, one of the first prophetess, sister to Moses, Prophetess, gift of the prophecy. There was even a time Moses wanted to misbehave with one woman. She got angry that his brother wanted to misbehave. The Bible said God did what? Struck her with what? Leprosy. What call? You know. See, and let me tell you too. There's equally those God has called, and He didn't choose them. That is why in a church you will hear somebody who is equally called by God. But he is teaching heresy and leading people to hell. And that is where I will teach you what is called the serpent seed. It is the same God 
You see those churches that they will tell you that it doesn't matter, you should come as you are, where a woman will come and open her, her breast. Come and sit with brother. Instead of brother to concentrate in what pastor is saying, brother is praying in his heart. Nah, uh, church, make this church close. Maybe I go talk to this guy. If there's the same kind of church that preaches, it doesn't matter, come. I was playing keyboard somewhere in Enugu during school time. And a girl was dancing, dancing, dancing. Her skirt was here. If she do like this, I will see her on the wear. One red pants she was wearing. Make I tell you, now what I see. Now, now I tell you, I see that. Whereby, when you are going to see a president, you will dress so that at your appearance of interest, your dresses is how you will be addressed. You shall be known as that this person is a decent person. But in the church of God, they will tell you, don't worry, it's the Holy Ghost that will do it. We know Holy Ghost has his role. But we, God has given wisdom and knowledge, has our role to play. Now, today, women are in charge. Take me to chapter 3. Which one do you read before chapter 2? Take me to chapter 3. Let me show you something. Chapter 3 talks about the overseers. Overseers, right? Yes. Start from verse 1. First Timothy chapter 3. Yes. From verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop. Now, I want you to underline things in your Bible. He said, This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of what? A bishop. Now, underline that word man and bishop. Yes. He desired a good work. He desired a good work. You know, there's sometimes people. Clarifies the Bible term of man that is, is the interpretation means both man and woman. Is that correct? Yes. But let's go down so that we can talk more of it and understand the analysis. Go ahead. Verse 2. Yes. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Now, I want you to now understand this. Did the Bible, in trying to express husband in any way, does it mean a woman or a man? By gender, male or female, male. So a husband is a male and not what? I don't. Need, is that correct? Eh? So what does he say there? He said, the "Husband of one wife." He said, "For you to be a bishop, you'll be what? Husband of one wife." That means you will be a male that has one female, which is a husband of one wife. What it means is that for you to be a bishop, number one, you will be a man. Everybody prepare your questions. I said, for you to be a bishop, you will be what? Now, how come in the foundation of who becomes qualified to as a bishop, becomes a man and not a woman? In the ministry of nowadays, women are highly anointed. I don't know how many people have noticed that. It's, in fact, there are some women that are gifted that when they speak, even you as a man will be so afraid. So from the beginning, the Bible said that God will release, at the end time, that God will release his spirit. Our, our what? We do what? Professor. Eh? Everybody, men and women will do what? Our youth. Our elders will dream. Is that correct? Right, right, right. Now, now, automatically, that thing is the spirit, the gift of the spirit. Not calling into the office of the fool. And that's why, but a woman, a woman can rise up here and start prophesying. If I even take mine to preach, some of you will say, nah, eh, this man should do what? She will hold on first. Make this woman do what? Finish prophesying. So, what we are talking does not mean that a woman is not anointed. What we are saying does not mean that a woman does not have a gift of praying. What we are saying does not mean that a woman will no longer talk. You will talk or you will say something. But in terms of the altar, the office of the foe, my brother, is an error. Today, where we right now made it so clear, for you to become a bishop, you must be what? A man, not what? Today we have women act, act bishop. We have women bishop. 
So we are now going to change it. We will change the scripture. We are going to bring by and rewrite it. That for you to be a bishop, you will be a woman with one woman. Stop laughing. Or we will say a woman with one husband. Eh? Then we will say a woman with one husband. Then we will say a woman with... You know, you know why this thing makes me to laugh? If you are actually conscious of making heaven, this thing shouldn't be a controversy in the church. Must you be an overseer? Must you be an overseer? I was telling somebody the other day that there is no way in the scripture a man was empowered to answer a general overseer. It's not biblical. What Bible spoke about in Acts of Apostles was so simple. That God has made us the overseas and the Holy Ghost, the general. <laughs> so, but we are not arguing those ones. It has nothing to, that's not an issue. That's personal doctrine. That does not change the call of our Papa them who has gone there before us. But I will tell you that there is some of us who has seen the true revelation and who is realizing it now. One, archbishop, uh, one bishop called me one day. Let me mention his name. Bishop Michael Konko. He said to me, I've watched all your prophecies and I can tell you we know those now who are the new prophets in Nigeria. I started laughing. Then I was watching a preaching of uh, what's this man's name from a Bible. He now shared a testimony of the same Michael Kumpo. He said when people was doubting a true revelation of who Jesus Christ is and there's some kind of pattern of teaching which is some kind of this kind of teachings and he said Mike said that he, he doesn't know why it took him this long to see the truth. When papas are talking like that, that means some of them might actually have made some error of following the crowd without seeking the true revelation of God. And it takes a man to say that thing if actually he said it. Because when your crowd is over 20,000, it will be difficult for you to change doctrine. Because people will be looking at you like... <laughs> So you mean you've been leading us in error since this how many years? It takes boldness of a man. Boldness of a man. That's a mistake I made when I was laying a doctrine. I'm going to preach it on one day. That particular doctrine is very wrong. And because you want to wake up, you want to follow one papa you believed on, one papa you trusted. Then when you kneel down to prayer, I was ministering in Oklahoma City as I was preaching on this topic. I've not even started. I only make an assertion and nobody knows where I was going or coming from or going to. One guy stood up and said, what crap are you talking about? And I was talking about women. And so they now apologize to me. Wait on and hear the man of God first. When I finished teaching and I asked him, okay, Mr. Crapper, are you going to ask your question? He stood up and said, you know what? They teach us rubbish here. Nobody tells us the true revelation. Everybody will just come preach. We'll, we'll go home and we'll just believe the Lord has spoken to us. <laughs> he said, but you just opened my eyes to an understanding. Amen, church. Amen, church. So, it is so simple and so understanding that a woman can carry every anointing and belong to some kind of offices of gifts, but in the fivefold, I don't know why at the Old Testament they were not allowed. At the New Testament, Jesus came when he led the foundation before he returned, he, they were not allowed, and they were once very close to Jesus, and that thing remains a mystery. Instead of me to dig that mystery and go to hell, I only operate in what I saw Jesus did so that I can make heaven. Every day, when I want to go out, my wife will say, Daddy, go and wear your ring. I said, I'm wearing this ring 
so that peace will reign in the house. From the foundation of the scripture, I didn't see anywhere. From Genesis, apart from I think Isaac or who, who used ring to propose someone. So where is the foundation of wedding ring being the identity that you are married? It's not biblical. So if we believe the revelation and inspiration in the scripture, that means it's not there. Then I tell him, I, tell, I told her, I said, as a young man who they believe that he's doing well the way I'm rising in the ministry, that that will not stop those who is choking their eye on your husband. They, in fact, it's even when you wear the ring, they will tell you they are now more comfortable that you're a married man so that nobody will be disturbing them. So what makes a genuine husband and wife is not the identity of the ring you wear. It is the genuity here that makes you a genuine husband and a genuine wife. We must have to understand how all these things work. This, I don't want to mention the name of church, but there is a church that laid this foundation of ring. Everybody came in and started copying it. Is that correct? Eh? No, be so. Everybody. That's why in our church, which one do you want? Now, ring, bring the ring. We are going to bless it, but this is not a guarantee that you will be a genuine husband or wife. And this is not what is bounding you together as husband and wife. What is bounding you together as husband and wife is not even the consecration of the marriage in the altar by your priest. But, the, but with the bride price they paid to your father and your mother who now blesses you. That is marriage. You know, religious has, has brought some kind of division that we don't even understand where to go anymore. The same thing. Now, you see, that's why even when I'm not here and my wife comes here, when church wants to close, he will not lead the grace. Grace is the last thing in the Bible. So it is expected that the elder in charge should lead the grace. And the elder in charge is not madam. She can never be madam. The elder in charge is a man and must be the next senior pastor in that church. <laughs> you might be shocked why in none of my branches, my wife, none of, none of them, my wife has ever become a signatory. The last time I decided she would be a signatory in one we started in Sulere then was because we now discovered that the pastors we used in that thing was doing a lot of things. When they brought account, we saw account, med medical this one, medical lab, you know, some certain, I said, what is going on? In fact, last three years or whatever, I saw about over half a million spent. What was he used for? They said, medical in this man of God. I none of you were sick. He said, buy malaria drug. I say, hey! And that is why a lot of churches, their pastors will be pastors and the wife will be assistant. Betrayal has gone. But that is actually wrong from the truth of the doctrine of the word of God. A betrayal has caused people, you have no option to put who will protect you very, very well. <laughs> oh. Take me to chapter 4 of that scripture. First Timothy chapter 4. Yes, sir. From verse... Just one, one to five. One. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly uh -huh. that in the later time uh -huh. some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith. They want to say anything they want. Giving heed uh -huh. to seducing spirits. They will just be giving heed to seducing spirits. And doctrines of devils. And doctrines of devils. As, let me tell you. You know, I, I, I've told you about that it is wrong for for a man of God to bring a comedian in the altar. Have I? Yes, You've had that teaching, right? Yes, it is not biblical. 
Bible says, I forbid you to do what? Bring just in the altar. It, let me tell you. Those, the Muslims, eh, cannot allow that. It's difficult for you to see a comedian come to where a Muslim set as an altar where they pray for, to just. It's even difficult for a comedian to go to where a native doctor. If here is native doctor now, I hang pot, hang a red something, and a human head, they are like this. I now invite a comedian. <laughs> even if you buy two million, he will ask you, uh, sir, where am I going to say? He said, there. He said, sir, hold your money. Oh. Nobody will train my children. Hey, what happened? He will be running away. But because of grace that has allowed anything to happen, anything, anyhow, now men of God bring, now you say a comedian will come to the altar and be using the pastor to do caricature, using Jesus. Will he tell you that he noticed that Jesus is dancing reggae? People in the church will laugh. <laughs> they are doing everything so that the church will feel comfort. My brother, we don't preach for you to be comfortable. We preach for you to always have a broken heart in terms of remembrance. Uh, there is a place we are going after here. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience said it's a iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every, for every creature of God for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused. If it to be received with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Uh -huh. for it is satisfied by the, by the word, word of God, God and prayer. Pray. So do not give ear to a seducing spirit. Those who will be teaching you to the wrong doctrine, and the way it sounds, it will be so sweet. It's just like when we wanted to do convention, one time, one of my friends who is a media person said, Daddy, I will bring a comedian. I said, Which author? He said, What do you mean? He said, that day, this is your doctrine. Kai, you're a young man now. You're a physical pastor. You need to, you know, dress robotic. I didn't see them wear short knicker. You will see a girl who wear one bomb. We are chain in the leg. And be shouting, repent. I don't know who is repenting if it is you. Or the people you're talking to. Even the baby is warning them. Ha, ha. Kai. This one is not my home. Oh, I'm just a passing through. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Ah, somewhere beyond the blue. Yes, sir. The angels back on me. Thank you, Lord. From heaven's open door. was not allowed in my own church. I will not take it so I'm so conscious of this heavenly race that 
at the end of the day, I will not be part of the grade of mistake. Just mistake. That's the day I taught you about unknown sin. I said an unknown sin is more deadly than known sin. I live a doctorate life with you. That's a known sin. But I came to your house because you are too close. I went to your kitchen, collected matches. And you know you won't complain. I know you won't complain because that matches is like five, five naira or ten naira. Now, when you came back, because you were not around when I collected it, when you came back, you began to look for matches. And you would say, what kind of rubbish is this now? What is this, this and that? Then you now decided to come back another matches. On the judgment day, I will answer for stealing. But inside my heart, I didn't call it a sin because my friend will not call it anything. That is unknown. The most dangerous thing that can take somebody to hell is unknown. I want to take questions now. I want to be rounding up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. I want to know, is it equally wrong for women to be deconnected? Very correct. Now, when I was making my assertions, I told you that there is a doctrine I made mistake on. I discovered that even when the apostles were laying foundation of church doctrine, that they restricted deacons as elders of the church restricted it to men and not women. And I decided to say, okay, because that scripture is in 1 Timothy 3, I think from verse 8. Huh? Verse 8 down here, yeah, you will get it there in 11 or thereabout. So, and I said, okay, all oh, my deaconess is you people will, will enter into the women fold. And from there, the mama will select leaders of the women. And whenever there are committees that women are benefited to fish in, we are going to fish in them there. So I've taken that decision already. So I'm aware of it. So it's equally wrong. More questions? Yes. Praise the Lord. Holy amen. For example, now I'm a pastor. Mm -hmm. Then I have a lot of crowd. Mm -hmm. After hearing this preaching, what should I do? Should I resist? If your husband is called. Now, if your husband is called, or if the person is married, you better allow your husband to be in charge. Then you can now operate the gift you have under your husband. Then the name pastor. You are not a pastor now. The only thing is that there is a gift you have that makes you when you enter the church. Maybe you talk very well. Maybe you prophesy. Maybe you command healing. That is not, that does not work. Pastor is a shepherd. Apostle is somebody who goes around the world and keep installing what? Planting churches, altars. Prophet is the mouthpiece of God. Evangelist is a marketer that goes to the street and bring. Then, and if you look at the way God is, uh, uh, the scripture analyzes a pastor, every pastor might, 99% might have a gift of teaching. So that means so many pastors are teachers. And that's why when a pastor goes to plant a minister, uh, evangelist will go and market them, bring them. Now for them to believe, they want to see the power move. And that's when the prophet comes out and say, I hear the Lord spoke to me. That by next month you shall become a leader in your state. And I had the name that you will be so-so thing. This, this, and that. And people will be jumping up. People with healing this, this. Will. Now, at the dying minute, that is not the focus of the business. The focus of the business is what the pastor will say or the teacher will say. So immediately they finish that job. Everybody jumping up. Hey, hey, hey. Now the pastor will tell you, now I come to you with the message of the Lord. That there is a man who died on the cross, that his name is Jesus Christ. Come unto me, O ye with heavy laden, and I shall give you. Now, the secret of the business, the target of the business is to bring souls to God. But God needed to bring all these gifts around so for the edification of the church. Is that clear to you? So, that person with a wise wisdom and God's revelation, a pastor friend, a daughter, is a pastor by the daughter. And he said, Daddy, you know, I was ordained a pastor in my church, and I'm still there. I said, But haven't God tell you that you, you have this gift? 
to prophesy and you love having this burden of going outside talking about that's a gift in the office of an evangelism yes she said yes i said then why are you answering a pastor he said well because my prophet ordained me a pastor let me tell you it's even wrong for a prophet to own a church now people will now say so who are you Have you noticed something since you've been coming? Or in any of my branches, if you watch me, you will notice that with the level of grace of God of prophecy, I can prophesy. I can teach. I can evangelize. I can pastor people and make you so much comfortable. That means anybody that has all these offices is an apostle by calling. So I'm an apostle. The prophet has taken so much. Everybody so. I even I tell them the other day, I want to start answering brother nonsense. Because even the prophet, people don't spoil and so they, if you now answer prophet, everybody will be bending down to look as not waiting. Somebody came from Abuja to worship with us. He came to this branch. He was just looking everywhere. He came into the office. He said, I am shocked. I said, why are you shocked? He said, Kai. He said, no wonder Jesus was born in the manger. <laughs> he said, I've never believed in any prophet. He said, he told me the prophets he had close to. I won't mention their name. Some that put uh, something in the ear. When you want to prophesy, they will tell you uh, his friend is in the church. His name is John. Kai, there is a range now. I've, I've traveled. I've traveled. I have seen. The other day, I was talking with my wife. I said, no matter my weaknesses, I am one of the most sent in this office of a pastor. She laughed. She didn't know why I said that. If I tell you my experience with some senior prophets in some countries where I'm going, South Africa, America, the ones I've met, Kai, you might not want to go to church anymore. What's the meaning of... Let me tell you, as we are talking now, if God didn't tell me anything to prophesy, we are going to pray, hear the teaching, and pass a declaration and dance, and I will close the. Must I prophesy? But people will do arranging to make sure that the momentum is maintained. But my happiness is that people are beginning to notice that the genuineness of this thing is not. In our ministry, in the seven first attendance, we will have about 3,000 something members in the first service. I shut down the ministry and went to America. I didn't shut down the ministry. I, I kept somebody there, but the pastor was not doing well anyway. So I went to America. I started churches. Now, listen to me. Now, I have discovered, even when I started this branch, the first service, everywhere was filled up. I left. When I came back, I met only three people. Not be so. When I get past that time, only three people. I said, but I've discovered one thing. So when I came back, people started coming. I said, I think I will reduce prophecy so that people will know that the kingdom is not, you know, because of problem, everybody wants to know where it is. Professor, professor. But I have now, the word has now discovered very much well that the genuineness of a prophet or a man of God does not come with the arranger of the crowd coming on that day. If I need crowd here now, eh, God. In fact, if I want overflow here now, I know what I go do. Don't doubt me, I, will, I can show you. But let me tell you, but I'm, I'm finding it peace. Do you know how many kings that come looking for me? When I say kings, kings that some people with such kind of crowd do not command. I went to a particular country at my arrival, the president went, the president shook and went and took my bag. Then his PA came to collect it. He said, no. He said, if you know this man, carrying his bag will be a blessing. The day I went to pray for the president of Ghana before he became the president, he was looking at me. He said, and you prophesied that I will be a president. And I'm not even, I don't even have, I said, wait. Has any of the prophecy God spoke to me, Phil? No. What is the reason? Because I am taking it gradually, easily. Whenever the Lord speaks, I will speak. When he don't talk, I will keep quiet. Now, 
And I said, God only sent me to do one thing, to activate your kingship. Seven days after I prayed for him in his house, in Akaragana, I came back. Seven days, he was declared the next president. Defeating an incumbent. And I have now discovered that where you are does not qualify what you carry. What you carry is it. I want to minister in my papa's church. Our papa's church is over 10,000 in attendees. I think correct. Now, some of the prophets were laughing at me because that day I didn't want to. I came on in a night. Boy, you went with me. So I went there to, you know, do one or two things then. So a seed and need and so he can pray for me. Let me come back. You know what he said? Very late, I drove myself. No driver. I wanted to close and come back. He now said to me, prophet, no, you know the Greek call me prophet. Is a pastor? He said that I be prophet. He said, shut up. You get church. He's a pastor. You know the prophet. I said, yes, sir. He said, pastor. I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm not going to pray for you here. Pastor, and also, I'll pray for you in the altar. My brother, the jean I was wearing here, Tia, with zippers. You know, night something now. I didn't, I just dodged from the back, enter office. So that. This man said, come to the altar. When I got to the altar, he said, Una no, I'm now the singer here, and this one here, the prophet now. Una no, I'm now. Okay, uh, Pastor, also, come, 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 let me pray. When, he came, when I got to the altar, he said, hey, bring my girlfriend, give her. Oh, yeah, Professor. Now, the prophets in the altar are many. They started laughing at me. And so many of them, you know, it has been long we left. So, so many of them don't even know who I am. That was their first time to see me. They were laughing. Even my boy here came to call me and say, they are looking at your, what you're wearing and they are laughing at you. Look at I said, let them be laughing at me. And I love when you laugh at me because you would provoke that which is in me. So he made a light, came out. I said, to him, wave your hands. I shouted my covenant song. I know that my redeemer lives. I know he is not far from me. I know when he will arise, the world we know that my redeemer lives. Hold it down. Immediately, my eye opened. My brother, I started breaking down. If you go to my channel, I shall go to be watching that service. So I started prophesying. As I was prophesying, the connection was too clear, over clear. You know, there's a connection you will make. Somebody will even be down to you. So I got to one woman. And I said, you have a baby? He said, yes. I said, I'm not the husband. What happened? He said, my husband is dead. Very small girl. Where's the baby? Then you can't afford the school fees of this baby. He said, yes. I said, at this time, the solution is not prayer. The solution is the money. I called him. Where's my boy? Go to the car. How much is it? He mentioned. I said, go and get me 40000 Come here. The school fees was I did 11000 or something. Because at that time, she does not need prayer. The solution was money. So as I was doing it, and I noticed that all the prophet that was laughing now came close was like this. And I began to shout this morning. Did I pray for this one? Did I pray for this, my son? I was mentioning the president by name. You know, my own ego now came and I began to uh, It is good to serve God in truth. He will never allow you to be ashamed. He cannot lie to me. He cannot lie as a lion of Judah. He cannot lie to me. Hold it down. Then immediately that thing was proceeding, something happened. As I was talking, and I called one of the prophets that was prophesying. I said, come here, I want to bless your life. The way I'm seeing you, I don't like it. I look at my watch. I, the watch I was wearing, what, over $600. I, I remove it. I say, can I give you this? He shot. Who, who no go grab him? 
As I was coming down from the altar, everywhere got scattered. As I was leaving, I said, the gallery of my papa's church needs to be built. At least, even if you contribute one million here, it's not bad. So I need 10, I think we raised over two, three million that day. I said, give it to me as an offering by the count of 10. Now they gave it, I handed it over to the church. So people came to me, daddy, I want to show it directly to your personal account. I said, no lie, no lie, go to the church. I don't need it. Before I finish, and I began to brag. I said, I've given this one a car. I've given this one a car. I've given this one a land. They were not looking at me. Because they were interpreting me by my sifas and my kakraka jeans. What you carry is not about the coat or suit you are wearing. It is about what the Lord has bestowed in you. Can I prophesy? Whatever the Lord has bestowed in you will shine from today. Anyway, where were we? Where are we? Where are we? Your answer. I don't answer you in another story. But did I make it clear to you? Your husband is not a pastor. Number one, by the gift you have prayed, you don't even supposed to have a church. So it's an error. You made a mistake. Period. So for the genuineness of the true principle of what God has sent us to do, you're supposed to be running ordinary ministry, bringing people. You pray. You do what? Go. Don't make it a household where everybody, church, church is like a family. It's just like what we do here. As long as you're a member of this church, even if from America, now we go come pick you from the airport, now we will lodge you, now we will do this. It's a family. It's a, it's a family thing. So you're not qualified to do that. It's, it's an error. So when you're looking at, you know, let me continue. Continue now to the judgment. Hallelujah. There are some people you will see like a, a lady, they will say they have a call. Yes. And they will open ministry. From ministry, the members will Push talk to her to start that a church. should start a church. A business. So the lady asked me, I say, if God did not send you to open church, you should not open. And she continued. Is it a crime or now, before I answer you that question, let me make it clear. Crowd of followers in your church is not an evidence of calling. Let me repeat. Followers you have is not an evidence of calling. It's just like tears. Tears is not an evidence of repentance. I can be preaching here now, you're crying. Before you reach here, your boyfriend call you for phone. You never reach out, you divert from where you're coming from. I'm going to see your boyfriend. I don't know if you understand. Now, when they are pushing you, it's very, very wrong. Because even you does not know. You have a gift. Prophetic gift. This, this, and that. Yeah, you can be praying for. You can prophesy. Use the gift of God in your life. But to start a church that qualifies it a household of God, you cannot be the priest. It's very wrong. Is that very correct? You cannot be the priest. A lot of churches today like you are like that. More questions. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. Say, daughter, she is called by God. She is gifted. Yes. Okay. So, we went to a man of God. The man of God told her that she will not marry an ordinary person with a pastor. Hmm. But people that are coming for her hand in marriage. Our business people. Our business people. Mm. Our other people. Workers. Even people from abroad. She's now listening to the man of God. What will she do? <laughs> well, you call it man of God, which I don't know if it is the big G or the small G. Big G. Ah, uh, big G. <laughs> you know, the other day, I don't know if you were in the church when I thought about anointing of the Holy Ghost. That there is different from baptism of the Holy Ghost and anointing of the Holy Ghost. If God wants to save you now, for instance, there was a testimony of a man who entered a bus. The bus was filled up or he was standing up. A madman came in front of the bus and asked, called him that was standing. A you madman, come down from the bus. 
The guy was there. Other people standing with him started laughing. They now say, oh, I'm a madman. Your fellow madman, they call you. Out of shame, he came down. Ten minutes later, the boss had an accident and everybody. Now, if it is me, as prophet, went in front of that boss and told him, God says the Lord, come down from that bus. This bus will crash and you will die. He will say, I've come for being all these street pastors. He will close that door. So, but because I think there is an importance of something he needs to do for God. What God did was to anoint a madman at that time to go and prophesy to him. God can equally anoint a native doctor. Maybe God wants to use this young man. When you get to the native doctor, the native doctor tell you, go, what thing you carry? I know if you are telling them, what you carry is bigger than my own. God was speaking. No person will pursue a customer that will give him money. God was talking through this person. Now, let me tell you what that doctor will do. I have had a lot of men of God who will always prophesy to this woman, your wife is in Kavanchan. I shit, no see anything. In fact, I've even discovered there are so many people that give this prophecy of marriage. God said that the name of your wife is Juliana, that she's in Oja Alaba. Now lie, her uh, sister, her sister did it. When God created an institution of marriage, he gave my man an empowerment that he that find it. Now, it is already established unto a man to go and find. God has no business in that. He will be shocked that she will end up marrying a man of God. And the person will beat him. Man of God means he has one office or gift to your praise. But that is not, that does not differentiate his character, his weakness, his attitude, his kind of person. We can finish dancing and prophesy when we reach out if Madame talk, we slap him. Oh, why? Now, when he marries that person, he said, I will understand his calling. They, I, I have a friend. In fact, the brother to our resident pastor in our back, the same thing. He said, God told him that his wife is in the mountain. He went to the mountain. When he got there, coincidentally, he saw a lady. A lady said, God told him that he would find a husband in the mountain. Two of them said, God is they marry. Let me tell you what is happening in that marriage. In fact, the guy doesn't even sleep at home. Because when he wants to leave, and the money the lady wants is not complete, he could beat her. He could beat the guy. The other day, he wanted to go and preach. Wear a suit, come at the portion and reach me road. Tear the whole Give him a dirty suit. I have an archbishop that cries today. The wife is a prophetess. And the wife can prophesy. But the wife can stop him on the road and give him a slap. I know him. He's one of my fathers. So man of God has nothing to do with character or attitude you carry. That is why the Bible says that the gift of a man comes without repentance. So you must not be a born again before you prophesy. Before you see visions. Before you do anything. That's why all this, a lot of top top men of God, I can tell you by exceedingly will not make heaven. Because with my eye, I have seen when they will finish, they will carry woman to hotel. Abroad. And they travel so much. I have seen. I won't mention them by their name. And that's why those kind of people can never challenge me in Nigeria. I will deal with them. They will take alcohol. They will say, leave this thing. Let me. Even pastor, you, you know one. You know one. That one drink alcohol like anybody. I won't say what he do so that some of you will not suspect the person. Amen. 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 So, God said you will marry a man. Which guy? Oh, let him. Do you know it is that businessman self that will be so happy that the wife is gifted with the gift of prophecy. And that guy can support the wife. Kai. You're saying, man of Kai. I'm a man. You don't say anything, brother. You don't say anything. Tell him, prophet. Thank you. Thank you. We need to be closing. Yes, yes. Let me hear him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want you to verify something to me. Yes. I was discussing with somebody about a, 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 a woman or a woman being called a pastor. Mm -hmm. So 
the person told me that uh, what I'm talking about said is not in the Bible. Mm. The name pastor is not in the Bible. Oh. Oh. That I should, I, should, I should prove him right or wrong. So I had to rush my phone. Let me ask Gogo. So I had to ask Gogo. <laughs> but I didn't find pastor there <laughs> in the Bible. So I don't Bible know. is so many places in the Bible. In the fivefold ministry, it was so. I think in First Corinthians, in Ephesians, eh? First Corinthians, what? Twelve to the eight. There's some other places too. It will tell you the fold, and the fold he mentioned it so clear: apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and what? Teacher. So those are the fold, and those fold was operated by the apostles that came. So, it's in the Bible. <laughs> okay, so Gogo might not answer you everything. Gogo is a man-made. Yes. Is there another question? <laughs> so that we'll be rounding up. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, sir, among the five food ministry. Sir? sir, sir. Among the five food ministry. Yes, yes. Is there any office for a woman there? This is your question is bewinching. Yes. So she's trying to bewinch me with that question and see what he will say. Because in that five food ministry, the office of evangelism, uh, evangelist is there. But Matthew 28 said something. He said, go ye into the world and do what? Preach what? Preach the gospel. Oh, now, a woman can preach the gospel. A woman can tell his neighbor that that thing you're doing is not good, that Jesus Christ is. Not be preaching me that. So that means a woman can evangelize for Christ. Evangelistic. Evangelistic gift. Now you write that one. Amen, church. So a woman can spread the gospel. Through the gift of God in your life, a woman can speak about what? Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So that's why we can easily call you a woman of God and an evangelist. Sir, another one. Yes. Please, I want to know, is there um, any difference between teacher and evangelist? Teacher. Teacher. Yes. Can teacher. a woman teach the word of God? Now, if we follow what Apostle Paul said, he said, I suffer not a woman to do what? Huh? Is that what he said? I suffer him not to do what? Teach, teach, teach. Now, now let, let me make this clear. Now, in that place, Paul was trying to talk about the supremacy of leadership, authority. So that men, women shall be subjected by all kind of subjection unto a man. Which means a woman should be silent. That does not silent gift of God in your life. Apart from teaching, being in the office of calling. Teaching is equally what? A gift. The same way a, prophet, a, prophet, a prophecy is an office. And equally belongs to the fruit of the word. The gift of the spirit. So there are some that are, that's why as a prophet now, there's a level you can disturb me, disturb me, disturb me, disturb me. I will tell you, okay, wait, you will wait. I will ask you, okay, let me pray. As I take time, I can easily get connected. But somebody with the spirit, if God have decided not to use him, I can wake God when he is, anywhere he is. I say, ah, I tend to this case. But somebody with the gift, that's why when we start worshiping, the spirit comes and take everybody in their own offices of gift. If you can speak in tongue, you see that immediately the spirit came, you began to speak in tongue. Those who can prophesy, we began to do what? Prophesy. But as I'm preaching, I can wake up and say, who is John? This is what the Lord told me. This. So they are different from the office of a prophet and the gift of a prophet. So a woman can teach by the gift of God, but not by the office, which makes him authority over a man. Is that clear to you? Yes. Okay. To ask, regarding to what she said yes. about yes. being an evangelist. Yes. So I want to know, does a woman needs to be ordained into the office of an evangelist before she becomes a witness to. for Christ? Now, said, now, there are two things based on doctrine. Now, the word ordination has weight, which everybody might want to say, no, it is wrong for you to ordain a woman. But it is not wrong for you to consecrate workers under your foot. I repeat, it is not wrong for you to consecrate workers and ministers under your fold and give them the impartation as a father for them to go and do the work 
of God. So what I do here is any woman I see with the zeal of contributing to the kingdom, I will bless her and ask her to go. It's consecration, not consecration. Ordination. So using the word ordination makes it big, loud, and no, all these people, all, all these my church people with their heavy questions. Yes. Is that clear to you now? Okay. I know where they're coming from. Don't mind them. Any other question here? Any other question? Shall we rise up on our feet? If you were blessed this morning, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. Christ.